delighted that you're here with us. This is the uh, second day of Christmas, so we got two turtle doves going this morning. Uh, welcome to Church of the Good Shepherd in beautiful Lake Wells, Florida, and uh, welcome to all those joining us online, wherever you may be. For those online, our service continues on page 299 of the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There is one body and one spirit. There is one, God, all of us. one Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have poured upon us the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light, enkindled in our hearts, may shine forth in our lives through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 147, as printed in your bulletin insert. We will read it responsibly, breaking at the asterisk. Hallelujah, how good it is to sing praises to our God. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem. He heals the brokenhearted. He counts the number of the stars. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. The Lord lifts up the lowly. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. He covers the heavens with clouds. He makes grass to grow upon the mountains. He provides food for flocks and herds. He is not impressed by the might of a horse. But the Lord has pleasure in those who fear him. Worship the Lord, O Jerusalem. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has established peace on your borders. He, you with the peace. he sends out his command to the earth. And his word runs very he gives snow like wool. He scatters, like he scatters his hail like breadcrumbs. He, his he sends forth his word and melts them. He declares his word to Jacob. He has not done so to any other nation. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Galatians. Now before faith came, 
we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of, our, of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an, an heir through God. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord.
Pray with me. Come, Father God. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit. Open our hearts and minds to that which you would teach us this day. For it's in your holy name we pray. Amen. I'd like to invite the children to please come forward. All right, you guys got to kind of come over here, I think. Can you come around this side a little bit? We don't have quite as many as the other night. All right. Remy, come over here, baby, where I can see you. Can you all slide? Everybody slide over this way. Slide over this way. There you go. There you go. That's Come on, slide, slide, slide. How are you doing, Cannon? Good? All right. <clears throat> so, did you guys have a nice Christmas? Yes. You know what else is really cool? No. Did you know that it's still Christmas? Yeah. Yes, it's still Christmas. There are 12 days of Christmas. You, you heard that song? There really are 12 days of Christmas. So, the joy keeps going on and on. We've still got the decorations and the tree up and everything. Now, i got a question for you today. Uh, have any of you ever started a fire? Yes. On purpose? No. <laughs> yes. 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 Uh, okay. Okay. They brought you to your house? Yeah. Oh, that was really good. Daddy and mom? Okay, let's just, okay, good job, Gannon. <laughs> All right, so, Reed, how did you start the fire? Um, we, we, Do you just put a match straight on the wood? No, I put it on dead wood. You got to put on dead wood. Well, really, you got to start with something very small, right? You, and that, we, we call that kindling. You know, you get some little tiny, tiny sticks or maybe some moss, some dried moss, something, or even sometimes people use paper, but something's very dry and very I easy. Like, um, it's like, like notebook paper. Some notebook paper, yeah. So something nice and dry, and then it starts very small with something like a match, right? And then what happens? You add, yeah, you add bigger and bigger and bigger until you get a nice fire going, and then it'll go for a good while. And if you want to keep it going, what do you have to do? You got to keep kind of adding and tending to it, right? All right. Okay, well, I want you to think about your faith this way, because God has put faith in your heart that you would seek after him, Okay. But there's this part of it that involves us as well. Because God gives you the will to choose and to do what you're going to do. And the older you get, the more responsibility you're going to take on for yourself. And part of that responsibility is the attention that you pay to tending to the fire of your faith that's growing in your heart. In other words, if you just ignore it and walk away, what's going to happen? It can kind of burn out, right? And if, if you go off by yourself, see, because you guys kind of act like, like, like different bits of charcoal that you kind of stay together. And if, if you take one piece of the fire out and, and take it away, what happens? It burns out, right? So there's two important pieces of this. One is that you've got to keep feeding it. So how do you feed the fire of your faith in your heart? By lightening it with what? Not, no, you're not going to put a match in your heart. What would be, what would be a good way to feed that? What, what would be like putting more, bigger sticks on it and everything? Well, coming to church is part of it, right? What else? When the fire gets off, when the fire gets off, Okay, when the fire gets hot, some dad does something with it? Is that what you're saying? And mommy, now it's not burning anymore. 
Okay, so you're, you're in good shape now? Okay, yeah, Cannon, Cannon I, it's very important what he's saying, and I just don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, so, 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 so you, you can add to that fire by, by coming to church, going, going praying, and, uh, and reading, and deciding, you know, to spend that time, a little bit of time each day with God, okay, and, and paying attention to those things is very, very, very important. It's, impo it's, it's the most important thing, really, that we can do, because everything else feeds into it as well. It'll help you to, to be a better student. It'll help you to be a better teammate. It'll help you to do everything, okay, and to have, have strong families and all those good things. And this is the light of God that he brought to us in Jesus. Now, it's an exciting day, too, because what are we doing today, Tess? My cousin's getting baptized. Your cousin's getting baptized. And what's her name? Lily, Lily is getting, Lily Van Hook is getting baptized today. And a couple of years ago, three years ago, I baptized you. Sure did. Do you remember that? No. <laughs> well, it was a big day for Canon, wasn't it? Yeah. And, and the thing is that, that you know, the, that bright light of, of God's grace is already burning in, in, in Lily's heart. But we, it's got to be fed, right? So we're going to baptize her today. And then we're going to work with her her whole life to make sure that she knows God and has that same strong faith growing in her that's growing in you. All right, can we pray about that? All right, let's, let's pray together. Repeat after me and the congregation, please join in. Dear God, Dear God we, thank you so much we thank you so much for the bright light of your grace, the light of your grace that you brought into the world in your son Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, for placing that light in our hearts and for helping us to make it grow. So we pray that you would always help us to grow in that light. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Help me up. Don't, don't fall on your cousin. All right. Thank you, Cannon. You know, uh, I talked with the kids about how to start a fire, and uh, they kind of missed a little bit of a key point there, though, didn't they? I mean, we always start a fire with kindling, but even before there's the kindling, there is the Word. In other words, they weren't thinking about starting a fire until I suggested to them that we were going to think about starting a fire. So that put the Word in their minds and in their hearts, and, and it started to become a growing thing with, with ideas. And... And the truth is that everything, everything that we create, everything we do begins with a word. You know, we mostly tend to think about language as the ways in which we communicate with each other. But the truth is that language structures how we receive and understand the world around us and how we respond to it. It has everything to do with how we, the structure of our brains and how we form ideas, which then can be physically enacted and manifested in the things that we say and do. Now, here we have Exhibit A. Exhibit A is little Lily Van Hook, and she is just as sweet and as beautiful as you can imagine. Uh, she's got cheeks like right out to here that are just <laughs> perfect for nuzzling. And... Uh, you know, Lily didn't just show up. There's a story to her arrival. And it begins kind of wherever you decide to pick up the story. I mean, you could say that Lily's here because they got ready and came to church this morning. But you know it goes back beyond that. We can go back to uh, maybe start the story that then one day Mason had met Emily. And that could be a kind of, or you might go back to, to where they began and, and where their parents began, and, and you can take it as far back and on it goes. But this story rolls forward until one day 
Baby Lily arrived in all of her astounding cuteness and sweetness. And you know what happened when Lily came into the world? Why, they didn't tell anybody. No, of course, they announced it. They shared the good news with family, and it radiated out and out and out to family and friends. There's announcements, and, and her story has been told probably thousands of times already. With every encounter, you tell the story of this, this baby coming into the world again and again and again. And her story continues. Her life is right now being anticipated. And it's being lived. And it's being remembered. And all that is an ongoing part of her story. It's always a story. And her life, along with everything else then, begins with a word. And even if that was an unspoken thought. Now, babies are wonderful. I love babies. I, I just... I'm a baby guy. Um, and, and so we know that her story is, is new, but it also has unbounded potential. And one of the great things of having a baby in the house is that every day, I mean, literally every day, is filled with new discoveries as she, as she takes in the world around her. They're, they're absorbing everything at a rate that we can scarcely imagine. All those sensory inputs are flooding in and building on each other. She begins, as she continues to grow and develop herself. And then there comes, uh, I see there's kind of a, a real shift that happens around three months, and that's, that's how old Lily is, right? She's about three and a half months old now. And, uh, and they start kind of interacting proactively with the world around them. I'll never forget, you know, that moment when you get so excited because a newborn smiles at you and the nurse tells you, well, it's just gas. <laughs> and the thing is with, with Lily is that over the next nine months or so, she's going to continue to listen and watch intently. And eventually, she's going to say her first word. And you will remember that word. You'll remember it your whole life. It'll be a magical moment. And you'll certainly remember the first time she says mama or dada. And she means it. And I'm reminded this morning of this little, little sidebar story. Um, so my son, Philip, when he was just a little bit more than a year, maybe 14 months or so. So he's, 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 he's walking, but he's still a little unsteady. You know, the head's kind of big in relation to the body at that point so you know balance is, is crucial and and he's learning to talk but he has not talking a lot yet but he's learning to understand even more and there came this moment where I I lost my keys and I could not find my keys I looked everywhere you know and I normally keep them in the same spot but I, I just I couldn't figure out where you know and I'm kind of absent-minded so I'm blaming myself blaming myself and, and, and I'm, I've got a place to be, and I'm, I'm urgent, and, and where are my keys? Where are my keys? And something just told me to ask Philip. And he's only, like, like I say, 14 months old. So I, I look at Philip, and I say, Phil, where are Daddy's keys? And he looked at me. And I could see the wheels starting to turn. And I said, where are Daddy's keys? And he kind of looked at me a little longer. And then he turned, and he walked over. He had this little wooden box. That, uh, it was a lion, and he opened the box. It was a box meant for important things, right? So he opened the box, and he reached in, and he pulled out my keys. <laughs> they were exactly where he had put them because they were important. So you can see how important the enacting of the word becomes, right? Right? And so, back to Lily, you know, in all that, you know, the, maybe the most beautiful aspect of her being right now is the ways in which she's getting to know her parents. And she's just getting to know her grandparents and her cousins, and that's going to take some time. 
because she's got lots of cousins. It's a big and dynamic family. And the thing is that this is, this is uh, you know, I, 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 I kid around, and I've, I've told this joke many times, but, you know, I grew up in Polk County. I, I always thought that Lake Wales was the Highlanders because of the hills in the area. And since I've lived here for several years now, I've come to know it's, no, it's because it's filled with clans. And, and the Van Hook clan is one of those big clans. So she's getting to know all of that. And, um, and in some respects, you know, that, that kind of building of those relationships is like building a fire. And it is important to start it well. And then it has to be tended. And if it starts to fade, it needs to be stoked and fed and add more wood at the right time. And maybe you turn some bits at times and you make sure the embers aren't smothered. I mean, we are doing s'mores in this analogy, right? And all that comes to mind. And the ways that that involves story. And it's, I think, the reason that this prologue to John's gospel resonates so very deeply within us. Typically, evangelists will recommend using John's gospel to introduce people who are unaware of Christianity uh, to that good news that is Jesus Christ. And the reason I think it's so effective is because we know to our very bones uh, how we are, each of us, a story that is being lived and told. And there's a deep yearning that we have within us to understand how our story fits in with the broader story, with everybody else's stories, and, and we have this innate sense that there's this longer story that we're a part of, and so we're interested to hear about its beginning. The story that goes all the way back, all the way back, because we know there has to be a beginning to all stories, and it makes perfect sense that the creation of all stories begins with a word, the word, the word of God. And the Apostle John teaches us that this, this Jesus, who John knew and followed and who we saw do miraculous things and whose teachings profoundly reshaped our understanding of everything, this Jesus who bled and died on the cross and who rose again, John proclaims him that he is literally the incarnation or the embodiment of God's creative word. It's like all that creation, just everything that was created, that there ever was, everything was created through him. And when God speaks, things happen. Everything came into being through that speech, through God's word. Everything, including you, including me, and including Lily. Now, I have to be honest that that, that whole image of, of fire that I've kind of weaved into this to this point, uh, it's there because, uh, frankly, her, her daddy, Mason, is a firefighter. And, that, and he does, uh, as in forest fires. So... You know, and so I got to flip this analogy around pretty quick. You know, we're burning stuff. We got to stop it burning, I suppose. But you know, the best way to fight a fire is through fire prevention. I can hear his boss saying, "Only you can prevent wildfires." <laughs> so I really do need to flip this analogy around, or at least tend it a little further. Because, you know, the truth is that fire is exceedingly dangerous, and yet properly tended, it is among the most important tools that we have ever mastered. So one of the most important tools in fighting wildfires are the controlled burns that they do and the fire breaks that they create, and those must also be maintained. In other words, if you're doing a well-tended fire, and you're going around picking up dead wood everywhere, you're actually preventing the wildfire from, from spreading out. But it's got to be properly tended. And so it's in that regard that I find that that light of Christ, that fire of the Holy Spirit that, that, that God implants in our heart, properly tended, that it, it creates the fire break. Because what happens is you, you take 
your, our sin. We take all the wrong-headed and the dumb and the stupid and the careless and the, and, and the, the awful things that we do, and we just feed that into his fire and burn it away. And as we keep doing that, then those things don't build up where they can ignite and then cause real trouble. And so there's a sense in which God's given us that light, but we've got to tend it continuously. We've got to tend it in the exercise of our free will to choose God, to choose His way. And so that gift of relationship with God is very much like fire prevention. And frankly, that's true of all of our positive relationships. And, I, I, you know, I don't know if you ever had this uh, method used on you, but there comes a moment, there comes a moment when you're trying to get your teenage kid's attention. You're trying to really get them to listen and to see the wisdom in what you're telling them to not do or, or you're, 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 you're on to them about something they did do they shouldn't have done. And you can pull this out at just the right time. Don't overuse it. What if we told Papa about this? Ooh. If they got a good relation with Papa, that will get their attention. And it's that same sort of responsibility uh, that, that we engender when we, when we build that relationship with God through Christ. You know, I sometimes hear parents say about faith, well, I just want them to decide for themselves. I'm just going to raise them up, and whatever they decide to do is, is fine. And I, I say, yeah, that's, that's true in a sense, because we all eventually have to come to those decision points ourselves, not just once, but again and again and again, because a lively faith will guide every significant decision that we make. And we all have to own that at some point ourselves. But you just can't leave that to chance. I mean, we have no idea where life is going to take Lily. We don't know what career or career she's going to pursue. We don't know who she's going to fall in love with. We don't know what her family life is going to be like, you know, generations from now. But I'm pretty sure you're not going to just drop her off downtown somewhere and say, it's up to you. Figure it out. No. You'll make sure she goes to school. You'll make sure she does her homework, that she plays sports and learns to become a good teammate or she maybe learns a musical instrument, and in that learns about practice and patience and, and frustration, but then the steady improvement that will come over time. And then someday she's going to come to you with complaints about a friend or a sibling. Nope, no pressure. Um, <laughs> but you'll, you'll coach her up on maintaining relationships and boundaries and standing up for herself and and, and then teach her about forgiveness. And so in all those things, we trust she will form into being a young woman with real meaning and purpose, like her cousin Cadence. Yeah, just make sure you're paying attention. <laughs> now, all those things are very necessary and good. But you want to ramp it up to the very best level you can. And they are best when undergirded and enveloped in an abiding relationship with her family. And all of that is best when undergirded and enveloped in an abiding relationship with the Lord. And so on behalf of this church and the church around the world, we want to thank you for bringing her here this morning to giving us the opportunity to join with this wonderful family as we claim the bright light of that flame of Christ that's already, already in her heart and to celebrate the story which has such a beautiful beginning and to place her story with our stories in the midst of God's own story. Because the Word became flesh in the person of Jesus. And it's his plan for it to become embodied in everyone who will call upon his name, and all of us who join him. And so with that, I just want to say, 
Welcome home, Lily. Amen. Danny, you want to come up where you can see? Let Danny bring you up where you can see. spot. The candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. We say together. I present Lillian Jane Van Hook to receive the sacrament of baptism. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? I will with God's help. Will you by your prayers and witness help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I renounce them. Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your savior? I do. Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? I do. Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? Congregation, will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support this child in her life in Christ? We will. Let us join with this child who is committing herself to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Please stand. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe, I believe in God, God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and, whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. Let us now pray for this child who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver her, O Lord, from the way of sin and death Lord, hear our prayer. Open her heart to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill her with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep her in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach her to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send her into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring her to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed with the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Christ Jesus our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lily and Jane, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism, marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, together, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit, you have bestowed upon this your child the forgiveness of sin and have raised her to the new life of grace. Sustain her, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give her an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized. And together, we receive you into the household of God, confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with us in his eternal priesthood. The peace of the Lord be always with you. I left off one little piece, which is uh, the baptismal candle. This is to, to signify the light of Christ that, that's, our, that's in our heart. And you're welcome to uh, light it again on our birthday or anniversary of this day or whenever you see fit. And now blow it out because it is fire. <laughs> that's your. Okay, peace, peace.
Good morning. What a great, great, great day. I want to thank all our guests and visitors, especially all the family that are here and been friends in support of, of Lily and Mason and Emily. We're just grateful that you're here and uh, inv invite you to please stay with us after the service. We've got a beautiful reception. There's a gorgeous cake that's out in the parish hall right next door, so please stick around for that. And we also invite our guests and visitors to fill out one of the blue connection cards that you'll find in your pew and let us know that you've been here so we can follow up with you later. Also a reminder that our Alpha class is coming pretty soon, January 11th. Uh, that's gonna, it's gonna be on Tuesday nights from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, if you haven't already done so, please pray about whom you're gonna, to whom you're gonna give an invitation card. And there are, there are more cards on the Narthex table and, uh, on, on your way out. So please pick those up and, and share them around. And we never know who, who God's gonna touch through that ministry. All right, uh, reminder of this week, the office is, is going to be closed. Lisa will be here. Lisa and I will be here most of the week. Um, so if anybody needs, needs us for anything, we will be around. Uh, but we're not going to have the, our Bible study Tuesday morning or the Wednesday night chapel service this week. We just need to breathe a little bit. I'm sure you understand. And both of those will resume next week. Uh, and just to uh, make sure, in case you missed it, uh, Lily is the granddaughter of Keith and Kim, and uh, so we're really excited to, to, to celebrate in this today. Uh, also, um, these beautiful poinsettias that you see, uh, over the next day or so, uh, Cindy is going to have them out in the courtyard. If you want to come by and pick up however many you want, please come and, and do that. They'll be available for you. number of birthdays this week, including Adeline Williams. Nancy McCarthy, Jack Roberts, and Kim Van Hook. Please stand, Kim. And anybody else whose name I call, please stand wherever you may be. Also, anniversaries for Matt and M.L. Brown, uh, Mac and Elaine McKinstry, Mark and Teresa Parlier, Mark and Nancy Estes, Alan and Pat Corwith, and Bob and Valerie Warnicky. All right, so did I see the warning? I thought I did. Okay. Anyway, we're going to... Oh, there they are. They're right in the back. All right. So we're going to pray you guys up. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the bright light of your grace that you shine in these, your servants. Lord, we thank you for the gift of their lives and, and the ways, Lord, that they manifest your grace. Pray that you keep them, their homes, their families, and all they hold dear under the mantle of your protection. And that you would bless and guide them in all they do, that they would accomplish that which you have purposed through them. And that in that work, Lord, others would see you and be drawn closer to you. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. And now a word from our sponsor. This is from the Revelation to John. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. a star in the east on Christmas morn. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. It'll lead to the place where the Savior's born. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. Leave your flock and leave Rise up, shepherd, and follow. Leave your sheep and leave your ram. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. Take good heed to the angel's words. Rise. 
Forget your hurts. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. Leave your shield and leave your lamb. Rise up, shepherd, and follow. Leave your sheep and leave your ram. Rise up. Shepherd and follow. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in Jesus Christ our Lord you have received us as your sons and daughters, made us citizens of your kingdom, and given us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. Therefore we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. 
Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. The last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds and knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.